Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are primarily talking about Tesla Energy. Tesla has officially launched its energy service in the United Kingdom, and with that, they've shared a lot of interesting details on their plans in that market. We then also have an update on delivery for Tesla's latest product. All right, so starting off with Tesla Energy, Tesla today updated their website in the UK. You can actually access this from, I believe, any country as long as you just go to the drop down and change your location. So in the UK, on Tesla's homepage, they are now featuring a new product, quote, the Tesla Energy Plan, designed for homes with solar and power wall, end quote. Tesla also has a nice little two minute video there sort of running through the entire process end to end. But basically what this energy plan does is utilize Tesla power walls to create a virtual power plant in which Tesla will utilize their Autobidder software to manage energy storage levels in different distributed energy storage products such as the power wall. This adds value in a number of different ways, but I think the simplest way to understand it is to think of it as somewhat balancing the grid out. Tesla can purchase energy when it's really cheap, store it in their distributed network of power walls, and then resell it when energy prices are high. That's all managed in real time automatically by Autobidder software that helps balance out the grid, and then Tesla can profit from the differences in those selling prices. This is of course in addition to the normal benefits of having a power wall, which would be to store your renewable energy so that you can use that energy when your power production is not that high, and then of course having backup energy in case of a power outage. What that virtual power plant functionality enables is for Tesla to partner with an energy retailer, in this case Octopus Energy in the UK, to provide Tesla customers that have a power wall with a much cheaper energy plan than they could get anywhere else. Tesla on the website says it can be up to 75% cheaper for energy than any other available rate. So we're going to go into the details on that, but first there are a couple of unique things we have to understand about the UK energy market, the first of which being the terminology. So in the UK, essentially each energy plan is known as a tariff. I think generally we think of a tariff as being a tax, and here for the UK energy market, it does involve pricing, but it's broader than that. Basically an energy tariff here is equivalent to saying an energy plan. So the tariff involves pricing, it involves whether your power costs are fixed or variable, your provider, the energy source that you're using, whether that's renewable or something else. All of those details fit under what would be described as your energy tariff. So if we focus in on pricing, there are a couple of different charges. The first is what's known as a standing charge, that is a daily fee that you're paying basically for connectivity. And ukpower.co.uk says that the average standing charge for electricity in the UK is 20.58 pence per day. 20.58 pence is equivalent to 27 US cents. So that doesn't sound like a lot, but over the course of the year, that adds up to $100 on average. So that's the standing charge. And then there is a unit rate. So you're paying per kilowatt hour. I think we're all pretty used to that and on average that is 14.4 pence per kilowatt hour. Sources vary on this, but it looks like the average home in the UK uses about 4,000 kilowatt hours per year, which would lead to electricity costs of 576 pounds per year. That's about 750 US dollars. So all in standing charge plus the actual payment for the electricity, you're at about $850 per year and probably higher if you have to charge an electric vehicle. So with that context, let's look back at Tesla's energy plan in the FAQ, it says, what are the tariff details? Tesla says, quote, no standing charge on your bill, a 24 seven import rate of eight pence per kilowatt hour for current Tesla vehicle owners and 11 pence per kilowatt hour for non Tesla vehicle owners. The lowest flat rate tariff available on the market as of October, 2020. So at eight pence per kilowatt hour and no standing charge over the course of the year at 4,000 kilowatt hours, you're looking at 320 pounds or about 417, which will of course round up to 420 US dollars. So under that example, you're saving more than 50%, more than $400 per year, or about $35 a month. Remember though, that's for the average around 4,000 kilowatt hours. If you have an electric vehicle, you're charging that, let's say that's double 8,000 kilowatt hours. That should get you 10,000 to 15,000 miles per year from your electric vehicle. Then your annual electricity costs go up to a little over 1,200 pounds or about 1,600 US dollars. Under Tesla's energy plan, that same amount of energy would cost about 640 pounds or about 835 US dollars, saving about $765 per year or $65 per month. So that all sounds great. The energy on this plan is all renewable, but where the rub comes in is you have to actually buy the power wall. And in the UK, that costs 8,000 pounds. That's a bit over $10,000. So if you're saving $65 per month, well, the payback period on that is about 13 years. 
So on the surface, this looks pretty attractive. And if you happen to already have a power wall in the UK, it seems like a no brainer. But unless I'm missing something on the math here, this is a complicated subject. To me, it's not clear that this is something that everyone is immediately gonna be scrambling to adopt. Where things get a little bit trickier to understand or run the math on is when we switch over from purchasing electricity to actually selling electricity. So in the UK, there are a couple tariffs on that. There's a generation tariff and an export tariff. A generation tariff literally means that if you are generating renewable energy, you're gonna get a credit for that. You will literally get paid to generate renewable energy even if you are using all of that energy yourself, saving on your energy purchase costs. So that is called a feed-in tariff. And then there's also an export tariff where if you actually are selling energy that you produce back to the grid or rather back to your energy provider, you're gonna get paid for that. So under Tesla's plan, they offer a 24 seven export rate. So a fixed rate of eight pence per kilowatt hour for current Tesla vehicle owners and 11 pence per kilowatt hour for non-Tesla vehicle owners for any electricity you export. And Tesla says on the high end of that, so the 11 pence per kilowatt hour, that's up to 100% more than the highest flat tariff on the market. So if you are generating a lot of excess energy, it seems like the Tesla plan could be more cost effective even than the example that we went through before. I do wanna go through more of these details on this plan, but I do wanna just pause briefly and recognize that Tesla here is actually bundling a better version of their product for Tesla vehicles. And I think that's a really interesting signal for what we may see in the future. I've sort of always imagined this scenario where you buy your Tesla vehicle, your energy, your insurance, your autonomy, your full self-driving, all for sort of this one bundled monthly price. And while that's not exactly what Tesla is doing here, it is interesting to see them coupling different prices for vehicle owners versus non-owners. So that's kind of an aside, but one thing here, it was perplexing to me to see the export rate, so what you're actually getting paid for the energy you're selling, to be lower for Tesla vehicle owners than it is for non-owners. Like that doesn't make a lot of sense. But the reason for that is because the export rate has to match the import rate because Tesla is just going to be swapping energy in and out of these power walls so often, and they want that to be a cost neutral activity, which it can only be if the import rate matches the export rate. So Tesla offering that lower import rate for current Tesla vehicle owners means they have to do the same then and have a lower export rate. So those vehicle owners get paid less on the way out. I would assume that would be a net benefit for most owners, but again, if you are producing a lot of energy, I could see that being the opposite case in some situations. So in terms of how all this is structured between Tesla and Octopus Energy, Tesla says, quote, Tesla Energy Plan integrates Tesla's products with an innovative retail electricity plan. Building on its world-leading hardware, Tesla is now using software to ensure you optimize the use of your solar and power wall battery system so that you save on your energy bills. As for Octopus Energy, Tesla says, quote, Octopus Energy will provide all the electricity retail services, including account management and friendly customer support. Octopus Energy is a UK-based 100% clean energy provider renowned for its innovation and industry-leading customer service. It is the only retailer ever rated with five stars in every category by which magazine, end quote. For some additional context, Octopus Energy has more than one and a half million customers. Their 2019 revenue was about 459 million pounds and the Tesla Energy Plan is now available on their website as well. So I'll be curious to hear comments from people, especially those of you in the UK, and maybe those of you that are considering opting into this energy plan. The last thing I'll say on this is even though it looked like a relatively long payback period, costs on Tesla's energy products are going to continue to come down over time, and that's going to improve the math pretty significantly on scenarios like this. This is obviously still a pretty early iteration of a product, and I think there's a lot here to be excited about. All right, next up today, I want to briefly revisit a topic that we discussed yesterday. I want to clarify a couple things and also add some new information. And that's on the news that Shanghai will be increasing their restrictions on drive times for non-Shanghai license plate vehicles, which in and of itself does not actually impact electric vehicles, but because there are significant wait times for people to get license plates in Shanghai, there is an indirect impact on electric vehicles because Having an electric vehicle allows you to get a green plate, meaning if you didn't have a Shanghai plate before, but these increased restrictions mean you sort of need one now, the fastest way to do that would be to get an electric vehicle. Some commenters in yesterday's video helped us out with this. So the first one here says, quote, in Shanghai, people bid for a Shanghai plate, which costs about 12,000 US dollars. There's a monthly quota on release plates. New energy vehicle cars are exemptions. Say when you buy a Tesla, you'll be granted a new energy vehicle plate for free 
and you will enjoy same benefits as owning an expensive Shanghai plate, end quote. Then we have another comment here from Carl. He says he's been living in Tianjin, China for 11 years, drives there, sort of supports that other comment, and then adds some new information, which I'm just going to read all that here. He says on the green plates, quote, having one does not allow you to bypass this type of restriction. If your plate is from another city slash region, it does allow you to get a plate without waiting in line for one. Another type of restriction we have in China is not being able to drive one day out of the week. This is determined on the last number of your plate. So further plate restrictions like this would not increase EV sales, but longer wait times on regular license plate procurement would, and I don't see that wait getting any shorter. It used to be that we could buy a plate in Tianjin, circumventing the wait time. That has now been removed as an option. I would count on the Chinese government to continually and gradually incentivize buying EVs through stricter ICE regulation into the future." End quote. So with that context added, we have a new tweet here from Tesla Mania, who has been helpful getting some information out of China in the past, which says, quote, Tesla sales in Shanghai is exploding right now after Shanghai announced new restriction policy for license plates outside Shanghai last week. Multiple stores are reporting 5x or more the normal sales rate, Q4 secured, end quote. There's also a link to the China Tesla team outside of Giga Shanghai. They're holding a bunch of different signs, and one of the signs that a team member is holding roughly translates to in short supply or something like supply can't meet demand. So pretty interesting. Obviously, though, take that with somewhat of a grain of salt, but I thought helpful to round out yesterday's conversation. So the last thing today, certainly not the least, is finally an update on Tesla short shorts. Tesla emailed me and others today saying, quote, we appreciate your patience and excitement as we work diligently to get Tesla short shorts to you. As an update, we will begin deliveries of this product starting this week. Once your order is shipped, you will receive an email confirmation with your tracking number. We expect all deliveries to be completed within the next several weeks. Should you have any questions, feel free to reply to this message. As always, thanks for your continued support." End quote. So sadly, despite my multiple orders, no short shorts yet for me, but spoiler alert here, James Locke on Twitter at Arctech Inc does seem to have received some shorts. They shared some photos there and I will say they definitely look short. So we'll be keeping an eye out or maybe an eye closed for more images of those to come out. And that'll wrap it up for today. So as always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast and I'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday, October 28th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.